In this episode of Be Hooked Crochet, we're going to make a heart amigurumi. My name is Brittany and I'll be your guide throughout this tutorial. For supplies list and written instructions, please visit BeHookedCrochet.com slash heart. Let's begin. So we want to begin our hearts by using color A, and that could be any color of your choice. We will have a contrast color, so these are the two colors I'll be using. We're going to start with color A, which you can choose to be your main color. This is going to be the dominant color throughout the heart. And the other thing to note is how this thing comes together. We're going to start from the top of the heart and work our way down. So each of the two humps up at the top of the heart are going to be crocheted in two separate pieces. And then we'll join them together and decrease down to the point. So the best way to start off our first piece is with the magic ring. And if the magic ring is your biggest enemy, then you can use just a chain and, uh, and make the same number of stitches that we'll make for our magic ring. But this does have a little bit better of appearance. It closes tighter. So that's going to work out because we're going to be stuffing these. And you want to have the tightest stitches as possible. So to work the magic ring, you'll just put your yarn in between these two fingers here. And then wrap it around your middle and your index finger. And then secure that with your thumb. So I have the tail down here, and then I'm holding on to, this is my working yarn back here, just between these two fingers. Now you'll insert your hook underneath both of those loops, just in between your fingers, and you're going to grab this strand and pull it forward. And this is sometimes a little tricky, but you'll just work it under just like that. Then grab your working yarn, you can see I'm securing it with my pinky, just raising it up and yarn over. So grab that working yarn and pull it through. And now we're not quite finished, we need to make a chain in order to secure everything. Now once you have done that, then you can release your fingers from inside the circle, it should be mostly secure the way it is. And now we'll just work six single crochets into the center. And I'm making sure that I'm working over this tail here. And then once you have your six single crochets just like this, we're going to pull the tail to fasten up the ring. And you can pull pretty tight on this. If you're using the yarn, I recommend it's cotton yarn. and It's very sturdy. So you'll just pull it real nice and tight to close up that ring. And this is what we're left with. So this is our first round of the pattern. And we're going to continue in a spiral from here on out. So that means we're not going to join with this first stitch or with that chain one like we would if we were working in the round as normal. Moving on to round two, I recommend that you get some kind of stitch marker. I use these clover locking stitch markers. I find that they work really great. But if you don't have a stitch marker, then you can use a bobby pin that actually works really well or even a spare piece of yarn, just a scrap piece will work. And we're using the stitch marker to mark the first stitch in our round. And that's because we're working in a spiral. We really have no way of knowing what that first stitch is unless we mark it. And that's going to help us with our counting and increasing. So we'll just find our next stitch, which is right here. Insert your hook into that stitch and we're working really tight stitches. That's part of this design, so it's going to be a little bit difficult 
to work your hook through that and that's what we want because we don't want there to be a lot of gaps and openings in between the stitches because then the, the stuffing is going to show through and we don't want that either. So we'll make that single crochet and then I'm going to mark it with my stitch marker. So that is the first stitch in round two. Now we're going to proceed with round two by making two single crochets into every single stitch including that one we just made. So I'm going to make another single crochet into that stitch. And then I'll locate the next stitch right here and I'll make two single crochets in there as well. Now we'll move on to the next stitch, make two single crochets there, and that's our repeat. We're going to do that for every single one of our stitches for a total of 12 single crochets at the end of round two. Moving on to round three, we're going to increase one more time. So I'll just release that stitch marker from our first stitch of that previous round. I'm going to make one single crochet into the first stitch. And then make sure you mark that again with your stitch marker. This is now the first stitch of the third round. Then I'm going to make two stitches in the next stitch. Two single crochets in the next stitch. And then I'll make one single crochet into the next. And two single crochets into the next. So that's our repeat pattern. One single crochet in the next. And then two. And at the end of round three, we'll have a total of 18 stitches. So the next four rounds are going to be crocheted in the same way. We're no longer going to increase. We do still want to keep track of our rows with our stitch count, our stitch marker. All we're going to do is make one single crochet into every stitch. So once you make your first single crochet there, you'll mark that stitch as the first for this round. This is round four. And we just want to make one single crochet into every stitch. So once you've made it to the end of round four, we're just going to repeat that row for five, six, and seven. So we're going to repeat round four for five, six, and seven. Once you've finished working those last three rounds, your heart now should look something like this. So what we want to do at this point is we need to make another one of these. So we can go ahead and fasten off, just trim your working yarn, and then just simply pull that tail through the loop on your hook. You can release your stitch marker at this point and you'll use that to crochet your second one. So what I need for you to do is just follow the instructions for rounds one through seven one more time so we have a second piece. So once you have your two pieces, we're ready to join them. So I just crocheted up my second one. I did not fasten off. If you did, it's no big deal. You can just fasten on again. But what we want to do is just join these two together. 
so that they're going to be side by side in this sort of direction. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker once again. We still definitely want to keep track of our rounds, so we'll just set that aside. And I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch from where we fastened off previously. And you'll get your working yarn ready to do so. So insert your hook there and single crochet. This is going to be our first stitch of round eight. So you'll mark that. And it's going to feel really odd at this point. It's not going to feel very natural. This first round is just a little bit tricky. But from here, the concept is pretty simple. We just want to make one single crochet into every stitch. So we'll work that around the piece that we have here. Now we, once we make it to the end of this first piece that we made, we'll single crochet in that last stitch and then we want to organize these so that we can make our next single crochet into this stitch right here. So this is where we joined them. We want to go into the next stitch. So we still want to have a total stitch count of 36. And from here we'll just make one single crochet until we reach our stitch marker. When you've made it to the end of round eight, you just want to go ahead and, and count your stitches. We need to have a total of 36 because we're going to be decreasing every other round now from here on out. And we have to do so in specific increments for the pattern to work out. So you want to make sure you're starting on the right foot. So we need 36 stitches. The other thing you can do is just a little bit of housekeeping. We won't need to trim these. We can simply just stuff them but we are going to use one of the ends to help close up this hole. So where we join them, we do have a little bit of a hole. So we can go ahead and take care of that right now. Just release your hook. And then I just take the, the two tails from the very beginning and just stuff them in the middle. And then I'm going to take this tail and use it to close up the little hole that was created when we added them together. So you'll do this on the inside, it's really the easiest approach. And you'll just loop it around and catch the strand just right under there. And then pull that through. And there's really no right or wrong way to doing this. The, the main goal is that we just make sure we close them completely. Now we can see we have a stitch here and a stitch right here and that's where I'm going to just run it across. So underneath that stitch and then underneath that one there. And we still have a little bit of a gap there so I'll just come back around, maybe catch this loop here and go under right there. and then pull that tight. And now we have a pretty good opening, a pretty good closure. We have an, another opening right here. So I'll just go under there and then just pull that tight until you can't really see much of a gap through there. 
And then what I do with this tail is just tie it up with the end here. So of course we're not going to see any of this because it's going to be on the inside. So just take and make a little knot and then you can just stuff them in. And now we're ready to begin round nine. So before we start decreasing and switching to color B, we're going to make one more round of just one single crochet into every stitch. So round nine, we'll have one single crochet into every stitch. And it's a little bit confusing looking at it from here. You really want to make sure that you don't miss this first stitch right there. So that's going to be your first single crochet. And I would recommend that you just count your stitches as you go. Make sure you end up with 36 at the end of round 9. When you've made it to the end of round 9, you'll go ahead and start your single crochet, but we're not going to finish it because we're going to switch to color B now at this point. So just leave it with the two loops on your hook and then grab your color B yarn and create a slip knot. Now place that loop on your hook and then pull it through the two loops that were on your hook. So that's finishing that last stitch off and it still is going to be the pink color, but our, that means our first stitch of the next round is going to be in color B. So the other thing that I recommend you do is we're not going to trim the color A yarn because we're going to come back to it. We're going to be rotating every, every row with this color. So just go ahead and tie it with the tail from your color B yarn. And that's just going to help secure this color join. So now you'll just hold that yarn aside. We'll come back to it on the next round. So round 10 is going to be a round of decreasing, our first round of decreasing. So just release your stitch marker from that first stitch and make a single crochet into the first stitch. Then you'll replace that stitch marker and this part is really important to keep track of your decreases the beginning and the end of your round. So that was the first single crochet of the round. We want to have a total of four single crochets before we make our decrease. So that was one This is two, three, four, and then once we have our four single crochets in a row, we'll do a single crochet decrease. And how we want to do that is just insert our hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, then insert your hook into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop. Now when you have three loops on your hook you can yarn over and pull through all three and that is a decrease by one. Then we'll make one single crochet into each of the next four. and then single crochet decrease. And that's our repeat. We just want to repeat that until we've reached the end of our round. So if you've been decreasing properly, you should end up with the last two stitches as a single crochet decrease. Now since we're transitioning back to color A, I'm going to stop at this point here where I have the three loops on my hook. I'm going to drop color B 
and I'm going to finish the stitch with color A, so this pink yarn for me. So at the end of round 10, what we have now is a total of six decreases. So we have decreased our stitch count by six, so we should have a total of 30. And we're going to proceed with round 11 using color A. And this time we're not going to decrease. We're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch. And then make sure you mark your first stitch. It's very important. Now just make one single crochet into every stitch for round 11. Now when you have that one stitch remaining from round 11, just work half of your stitch in color A and then finish it off with color B. We're going to transition back to our contrast color for round 12. Now round 12 is going to be another round of decreasing and an easy way to keep track of this is just know that our contrast color is always going to have a decrease for us. So the last time we did four single crochets in between our decreases. Now this time we want to have three single crochets in between our decreases. So we'll just make our first stitch and then place our stitch marker. So that's one. Then two. And three. Now we'll make a single crochet decrease. And the technique is the same. The only difference here is the frequency. How many, how many stitches we have in between our decreases. So we'll single crochet once into each of the next three. And then single crochet decrease. And that's your repeat for round 12. Now once again at the end of your round on your single crochet decrease it should be your last two stitches but make sure you finish that stitch with color A. So leave those three loops on your hook, grab color A and then pull through and that's going to finish off round 12. At the end of round 12 what we have done is decreased six more times so we have decreased by six stitches. Now we'll now have a total of 24 stitches. We've already joined on or picked up our color A. So proceeding with round 13, we're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch. So just like before, when you make it to the end of your round, you'll just do a partial stitch with color A, and then you'll pick up your color B contrast to finish off that last stitch. Now moving on to round number 14, we just want to release our stitch marker. This time we're going to be decreasing again. And so what we want to do is change the number of stitches that we put in between our decreases. So I've made my first single crochet there. Last time we decreased, we had three in between. This time we're just going to have two stitches in between our decreases. So that was stitch number one. This is stitch number two. And now we'll do a single crochet decrease. And that's our repeat for this round. Single crochet in each of the next two. And then a single crochet decrease. So now at the end of round 14, you'll just 
work partial, a partial a single crochet decrease. And then you'll finish the stitch off with color A. And now at the end of this round, round number 14, we've decreased by six more stitches. So now we should have a total of 18 stitches. Round 15, we're not going to decrease. So we'll just remove the stitch marker and make one single crochet into every stitch. And once again at the end of the round, this is round 15, we'll just work half of our last stitch. We'll drop color A, pick up color B to finish the stitch. And I just want to quickly show you an easy way of counting your rows. It's a little bit different when we're working in spirals, so it's a little more confusing. If you get distracted or if you have to put this down and you need to come back and you don't remember what round you're on, I would recommend starting from the top here and you can see where we started the round so this is round one well and we kind of went around in this direction like this so the way I count is I look for this part where round two begins and I know that this is round one then two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12, 13, 14, and 15. So that's just an easy way for you to keep track of that. And now we're ready to move on to round 16, but before we do, we need to start stuffing this thing. Our hole is getting a little bit smaller, and really we could go another round, but what I recommend is before it gets so small that you can't get your fingers into, you want to at least have the bottom part of it stuffed. And there's a couple of different things that you can stuff this with. I'm going to be demonstrating today with just a polyfiber, just a stuffing that you would put in a stuffed animal if you were making something like that. Or you can also put some rice in this, uh, just, you know, uncooked white rice. And the cool thing about that is you can put these in the microwave and warm them up and they'll kind of serve as hand warmers too. So that's something to consider. Uh, for now, go ahead and, and grab your stuffing and then we'll, I'll just demonstrate real quickly how we're going to start stuffing this thing. So what I have here is just some polyfiber stuffing. You can hardly see on camera here. And I just take little sections, just what will fit in my hand, and just stuff it in. You can determine how, how thick you want this to be based on how much stuffing you put in. That's probably pretty obvious, but just stuff it to until it, it looks as full as you want it to. You can leave it a little bit, have less stuffing, and, and it'll look a little bit more flat, kind of like a pillow. Or if you add a lot of stuffing to it, it will really start to shape out and just look really, really full. So it's up to you. You can be your own own judge at this point here. I'm going to leave mine somewhat loose because I would like it to be a little flatter rather than puffy. Round 16 is going to be another decreasing round. This time we're going to have one single crochet in between each of our decreases. So we'll just go ahead and single crochet into our first stitch and place our stitch marker and then the next is going to be a single crochet decrease. Let's do that over the next two stitches. And then single crochet and single crochet decrease. And that's our repeat for round 16. Now once again, the last two stitches should be a single crochet decrease. We'll work half of that, drop color B, 
and we'll finish the stitch with color A. So at the end of round 16, we've decreased six times again. So we've decreased a total of six stitches. Now we have a total of 12 stitches remaining. And we're going to proceed with round 17 without decreasing. So we'll make one single crochet into every single stitch. And so once again at the end of this round, we'll start the last stitch with color A, then we'll drop it and we'll finish with color B. So now we're coming up on the last couple of rounds. If you need to add a little bit more stuffing, I would go ahead and do so at this point because you're not going to be able to put much into it once we move on from round 18. So now for round 18, we're going to decrease again. This time we're going to do a single crochet decrease for every stitch. So we'll do that on the first. So work that first single crochet decrease. And then go ahead and put your stitch marker in its place or after you finish that stitch. And then single crochet decrease again. We're going to do this a total of six times. It's going to get a little bit hard to hold on to. You want to make your stitches pretty tight at this point too. So we don't want to have any holes or any gaps. Now when you've made it to your last stitch again, just work half of it with your color B and then finish off the stitch with color A. Now we're going to make one final round and no decreases here, just one single crochet into every stitch. So we'll start off with that first one. I'm going to go ahead and place the stitch marker again. It's not a huge deal. You really don't have to at this point. And we should only have a total of six stitches here. Okay, and once we've worked our last stitch, just go ahead and release your hook. We have a little bit of housekeeping to do. We can get rid of our color B, so go ahead and fasten that off. And then fasten off your color A, but leave yourself a tail that's about six inches or so. Then I'm just gonna pull that loop through the loop on my hook that's going to secure it. You can release your stitch marker if you haven't done so already. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tie these two together. That's just going to secure the white, the uh, color B there. So I'll just secure that. And then if you can, just stuff it down into the heart. Now you can use your, your hook or whatever you have available. Now once you have that taken care of, we just want to close up this gap. And we're going to do so by creating a little bit of a drawstring. So we'll just thread that on our darning needle. And we're just going to go in and out of the stitches. So I'm going out on this first one, in on the next one. 
and then out and in. Then all we need to do is just pull it and you see how it kind of closed that hole up for me? So we'll just close that and now all you have to do is just secure this end. So you'll just run it under under your stitches. If you have any of the white showing, this will be a good good opportunity to cover that up. But just work around in a circle, working under the stitches. And once you're fairly confident that it's secure, just work it around so it's at the back side of the heart. We can tell that this is the wrong side because we can see our, our color joints there. Then we can just trim it off. Now the last step if you were using that polyfiber stuffing would just be to kind of work it out with your fingers, even things up, and our hearts are complete. My name is Brittany, and on behalf of BeHookedCrochet.com, thank you so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you go ahead and check out BeHookedCrochet.com. I have dozens of other free patterns and video tutorials that I think you might like to check out. Thank you so much. Bye for now.